Hi, I'm Jonas Peters. I'm a chemistry professor at the California Institute of Technology. I'm Emily. I'm a fourth year graduate student in the Peters Group. We're delighted to share this short video clip with you, introducing a paper that will be coming out in the Journal of the American Chemical Society very soon. Emily, if I could just ask you, why on earth is our group suddenly studying Sumerian coordination complexes? So the reason we're studying Sumerian coordination complexes is because I think we're broadly interested in the group in creative and efficient ways of delivering hydrogen atoms, protons and electrons, to unsaturated substrates. Uh, and so one actually quite good uh, source of hydrogen atoms that's used uh, somewhat regularly is samarium iodide with coordinated protic ligands such as water. Uh, so this has been studied pretty extensively by uh, Professor Flowers and others um, for reductions of organic substrates such as anthracene. Uh, but another reaction that we're particularly interested in, given our interest in nitrogen reduction to ammonia, uh, is this report from Professor Nishibayashi's group uh, where they use samarium iodide with coordinated water as the terminal H atom in nitrogen reduction to ammonia. And one particularly interesting component of this uh, reaction is that it has very little H2 evolved in the process. Yeah, that's actually a pretty interesting observation. So these are incredibly weak bonds from a bond association from energy perspective. So homolytically, they should bimolecularly release hydrogen in solution pretty rapidly, say even on the order of milliseconds. And yet reagents of samarium 2 iodide in organic solvents like tetrahydrofuran are remarkably stable in the presence of these polar product ligands, even water. And so developing well-defined systems to try to tease apart why that is uh, is something that we're fundamentally interested in so that we can make designer uh, reagents in the future, both for electrocatalysis and maybe other stoichiometric transformations. So that's where Emily's really been digging in. Yeah. Um, the downfall of these, of these systems is that they're stoichiometric in scenario. So you need a massive amount of scenario to, in this case, just reduce nitrogen. Um, and an obstacle to making these types of systems catalytic in scenario is the products. So the samarium-3 alkoxide products are often insoluble and even oligomeric, which makes it very difficult to think of about turning them back over. Um, and so at the start of this project, we thought a potential solution to that problem would be to install the samarium center in this hexadentate ligand that was reported by, uh, originally by Professor Maria. Um, and so this ligand is bulky, it's organic soluble, and we thought it would prevent some of the issues uh, that occur in the absence of any sort of supporting ligand. Um, and so indeed you can make this samarium 2 complex, which coordinates, uh, here we're using this pyrrolidone as a protic ligand, and it activates this NH bond to be transferred to transfer hydrogen atom equivalents to a variety of substrates and ultimately make this samarium 3 pyrrolidonate complex, which is soluble and monomeric. Um, the other thing that this uh, a ligand gave us access to was very nice uh, NMR handles and these terbutyl groups, and also we discovered that these complexes have very nice electrochemical behavior. Um, oh, so I'll just comment. So that's really critical because if we're trying to pick apart ultimately bond association free energies, that gives us a really good experimental probe to go in and explicitly measure the thermodynamic parameters that we need to extract those bond association free energies in a quantitation. Right. So uh, more specifically, we can use electrochemistry to measure this reduction potential between the scenario 3 and scenario 2 oxidation states. And then we can do NMR uh, equilibration experiments to measure the pKa of this scenario 3 pyrrolidone to pyrrolidone 8 fragment. Um, and with those two reduction potential and pKa variables, we can then use the equation at the top for the BDFB uh, of anything to calculate uh, from experimental data, the NHBDFE of the samarium 2 compound. And it comes out to this 27 kcals per mole value, which is really very, very low. Um, and from the reactivity of samarium iodide with water, it seems it, it, it was most likely that that had a very weak BDFE. But because those reagents are sort of just swirling clouds of halides and solvent molecules, it becomes really difficult uh, to do precise thermochemistry with those 
um, species. With those swirling clouds, yes. Yes, <laughs> swirling clouds. Well put. <laughs> uh, so the ligand enabled uh, more direct control over speciation and access to these thermochemical parameters. And also teasing apart some of the factors that contribute to what renders these BDFEs so low and actually gives you some rational design principles that you can go back in to try to tailor systems that would ultimately be electrocatalytic in scenario, which once we're done making this video, hopefully Emily's going to get back in the lab and start pursuing, because you can see by the cleanliness of this lab coat that it's unlikely I'm very useful in the laboratory these days. Yeah. Uh, 